Welcome back to Swordbox. Today on our 66 books in 66 days, we arrive at the book of Ephesians, penned also by the Apostle Paul while in a Roman prison between 60 and 62 AD in his address to the church in the city of Ephesus. Now we've talked about our salvation being a gift from God, that Jesus paid all our sin at the cross. By faith we receive his grace and forgiveness. We talked about how his Holy Spirit indwells us and leads us and seals us. We saw how God is working all of our circumstances together for good to those who love Him and how we must depend on God's Holy Spirit to live the Christian life. So what now? Now that I'm saved, the Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. What does God expect from me? Well, Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now this is a wonderful verse that as believers we need to get down into our hearts and not lose sight of as problems and struggles come our way and can get us off of God's course for our life. So let's look at this verse closely today. First of all, we're His workmanship. That means we belong to God. 1 Corinthians 6.19 makes this clear. It says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? As long as we think it's my life, it's my choice, it's what I want or need, we can't follow Christ. Jesus said in Luke 9, 24, For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. And in Romans 9, we're reminded that God is the potter and we are the clay. And this also means that he is in control and he is the one who plans and orchestrates the work in and through us. Philippians 1, 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Well, secondly, God has work for each of us specifically to do. Colossians 1.10, Paul prays for believers that they would be fruitful in every good work. In 2 Thessalonians 2.17, he says that his desire uh, is that the Lord would establish us in every good word and work. And in Titus 3.1, it says to be ready for every good work. All throughout the New Testament, we're instructed to be working in the good works that God has called us to do. Jesus said in John 9, 4, I must work the works of him who sent me. He didn't wander aimlessly around during his ministry. Jesus did everything with purpose and precision. He got away by himself and spent time with the Father in prayer. What God said, Jesus said. Where God directed, Jesus went. And what God said do, Jesus did even to the death of the cross. Now, we can go in a million directions each and every day in our lives. We can be busy in all kinds of work and still miss the works that God has for us. So like Jesus, we must get our marching orders from God. We must seek His direction each day and walk in the good works that He has for us. The Apostle Paul, after being saved, went and spent time with God. He received God's instructions, God's word, and then he ran the race that God set before him. It was not the same as anyone else's race or anyone else's works. They worked God's specific plans. They were God's specific plans for Paul. 1 Corinthians 9, 26, he said this, Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. Just like Jesus, Paul knew the work that God had called him to do and went forward with purpose and confidence. But it all started with getting his directions from the Lord. Galatians 1.12, Paul is speaking... Uh, the gospel, uh, and he says this, For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now this doesn't mean that we're to wait for some new revelation or new gospel from God, not at all. We have the complete revealed word of God. But the point is, is that Paul received his instructions for the work to do from the Lord, and not from man, or not from his own ideas, or how he thought he could serve God. God initiated it, God laid it out, God planned it, and God sent Paul. Well, thirdly, God has already prepared works for us. The opportunities will be there. The needs will be there. God will be there to supply all that we need to do the works. The question is then, will you and I be there? What is going to determine that is if I'm willing to spend the time with God, seeking His will and direction, and then if I'm willing to obey Him. There are many, many works that God has prepared for each one of us. Some are daily, some are temporary, some may last a lifetime. And these works are not limited to service in the church 
or any one area of our lives, but apply to each and every area of life from our home to our work to our hobbies. But we simply can't do anything or spread ourselves too thin. Only those works that God has prepared specifically for each of us. He will use your talents and your gifts and your resources together with your opportunities and put you in the places where He can use those in and through your life. God is the supplier. He's the power source. And He's the one that brings the good about as a result of our obedience. We don't need to become frustrated or overwhelmed or feel inadequate because we can do all things. All the good works God has prepared for us through Christ who strengthens us. But be in prayer about the opportunities that will come your way. Ask God to direct your every step. No longer view the daily tasks and responsibilities as meaningless and important. We are told that whatever we do, in word or deed, we are to do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in each and every day. A special thanks to all of you who watch here, uh, allowing us to come into your home and share the good news of Jesus Christ with you. God bless you. We'll see you back here tomorrow.